You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the show. I can't wait to get into our weekend edition of the Cabral Concept, which we call our Cabral House Calls. It's where I get to step into, figuratively speaking, the homes of those people all around the world that may have a question about their health, their wellness, their weight loss, their anti-aging-based goals. So I look at it as one of those ways where Doctors used to be right in the community, and there'd be a group in the community, a couple hundred people, maybe just a hundred people or so, and it could be that go-to person that you could simply ask questions to. And I really like that format, You know, really just being able to ask a question to someone that has your best interests in mind, and I really do, meaning that there's no agenda here, there's no I'm saying you can only do it one way, but it's simply, what have I seen work? over the past almost 20 years now, 19 years and counting. And what I want to do is just share that experience with you. What is it like to work with, oversee over 250,000 client appointments? And again, growing every year. So I just want to be able to share that with people. And that's what these weekend host calls are all about. They're not to you know sit here and say, I know everything about you. And I know everything about your story. And I've seen all your labs. That's not what this is about. But this is about saying... I don't know what to do. I don't know where to turn. I don't know if this is good advice or not. Can you help me out? And and I'm absolutely happy to do that. And I made a commitment. I mean, I made that commitment many, many years ago. And I said to myself, you know, one night, another sleepless night, couldn't take it anymore, a lot of stress. And I just said, hey, if I ever figure this out, I'll share it with the world. That was what I said. And I think that I did. I mean, I really think that I'm racking my brain right now to say, is there something we can't figure out? And I don't think there is. Of course, a terminal illness is something that's next level, something that's quite intense. But I'll tell you this, never lose hope. How many people have you read about story-wise where they were terminally ill and they got better? So most people listen to the podcast and are terminally ill. They're ill. They have a dis-ease of the body. Hashimoto's, rheumatoid arthritis, sarcoidosis, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, psoriasis, migraines, debilitating hives, skin rashes, parasites, SIBO, candida, Crohn's, colitis, IBS, you name it, right? We've basically seen it all. I mean, they're going to come up with a new name every year for a different disease, but they're all ailments and we can fix those. We really can. But again, we're not curing the disease. We can only fix the issue by looking at what would cause the symptoms in the first place. And if you didn't have it when you were six years old, then you can't say it's just genetic because why didn't you have it when you were six? You can say that it's lifestyle, environment, rain barrel predicated. So now let's reverse the process. We can figure this out. We can do it. And these house calls are what I want to say is the first step to doing that. So now that we've gone through all that, without further ado, let's dive into this weekend's questions. And again, every week I do two of these shows, Saturdays and Sundays. I don't know how many questions we... I'm going to ask my team one of these weeks, but we've answered over 3,000 questions from people on pretty much every continent around the world. And I'm excited about that. All of the questions will be listed today at stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts or stephencabral.com forward slash 1254 for the direct link today's show notes. If I ever name a lab, if I ever name a nutritional supplement that you could use if you choose to, it's always your choice. That's at equilibriumnutrition.com. If I talk about a previous podcast, or where to search previous podcasts, that's at stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts. And the last place, if I ever say, hey, this is a great question to ask, but I know that you really need to get your answer sooner than 10 or 12 weeks, which is when I can you know, get to these questions because they just come in in the order they come in. Ask that right at cabralsupportgroup.com. Free Facebook group, my best health coaches, they're in there. They're answering questions for you. 
Again, we're here to serve. We're here to help. All right. Let's dive into that first question. It's from Joanna. Joanna writes in, Hi, Dr. Kural. I'm currently week 10 of the CBO protocol and also completed the detox prior to the CBO. I've been having a strange sensation after I eat the majority of the time where my stomach bulges out. It's like my stomach on the upper left side is bloated almost. It's not painful, just strange sensation. And this has been going on prior to the CBO. I'm studying IHB. It could possibly be the lower esophageal sphincter isn't closing properly or low hydrochloric acid. Since starting the CBO, I've been getting pain that is in the upper left side, sometimes right and below my mid back and upper. Could this be related? Would you have any idea what this could be? I had an abdominal, and these are all kind of like in in short form. So I'm trying to read the whole question here. Ultrasound gallbladder was fine, but showed a small cyst in my kidney and liver. Many thanks, Joanna. Okay. Let's definitely get to what this is anatomy wise, right? So what's the upper left quadrant of that torso right around your rib cage? Now that is where the esophagus empties into the stomach. So it absolutely could be an improper closing of that lower esophageal sphincter. That can happen under stress. It can happen because of a hiatal hernia. Have you been checked for a hiatal hernia? What's one thing at least to look for? Do you have low hydrochloric acid, which might be why that you know valve is not closing? For that, we could use betaine and pepsin, which is a nutritional supplement, or try some hot ginger tea before and during that meal, or a little apple cider vinegar in just four, five, six ounces of water. A sip on that a little bit before the meal and during the meal um, as a digestive aid. You can also use digestive bitters. Our digestive enzyme 10 minutes before a meal should help with that. So these are all things that will absolutely rule out that part of it. You're almost done with your CBO protocol, which is great. So you're going to be coming off of that. You'll be then using the CBO finisher, which is the healthy gut support and the daily probiotic support to rebuild that gut wall. And what else would I look for? Well, and then if you haven't done the stool test yet, I would check for H. pylori. So those are the main things that I would do. And I would work them in that order because it's less expensive in that order as well. All right, great question. And then Joanna, you wrote in again. Hi, Dr. Brawl. I've been just diagnosed with a simple cyst on my liver and one on my kidney. You wrote that you're on uh, week 10 of the detox. Can I treat them naturally? Could it be a buildup of toxins? What causes cysts to develop in the body? I'm coming off an oral contraceptive. And I was very depleted of minerals was getting stomach cramping. I heard an acidic body can cause these as well. What are your thoughts? Many thanks for taking the time to answer these questions. Okay. So hands down, I absolutely do recommend figuring out what the cysts are made up of. You know, is this a calcium oxalate based stone? Is it simply a cyst being more tissue based? And if it's benign, I went through something like this myself many, many, many years ago. And they thought it was sarcoidosis, the beginning of that, right? Because that runs in my family as well. But it turns out, you know, it was essentially a benign cyst that I've done nothing about. And this was in my lungs. So, you know, sometimes the technology is just so amazing that we have today that we can notice these one millimeter or less cysts that honestly, probably nothing, right? I do check in on it. Do make sure it's not growing. A couple things that you can do that proteolytic enzymes, you're already doing them with the CBO protocol, which is great, like the Florafilm. You can take those away from meals. Let's call them protease. The protease enzymes help to break down proteins and sometimes overgrowth of tissue. So that's great. Serapeptase works great. Natokinase works great. Again, these are all enzymes taken upon waking and before bed. Uh, Upon waking is definitely away from food, so I highly recommend that. And then um, again, balancing the pH of the body and the tissues does matter. A lot of people will come out and say, well, there's no such thing as balancing pH. There technically is. Your body balances pH every second of the day. It just uses your body's own natural minerals to do that. So it uses your calcium, your magnesium, your potassium, and sometimes sodium. So, you know, those do matter. I would absolutely recommend adding a little bit of lemon to your water with a little pinch of sea salt or lime, a little bit of apple cider vinegar, Bragg's apple cider vinegar, if you like it. And even uh, just, uh, just depends on the person. Honestly, it does. A little bit of sodium bicarb in between meals could be fine as well. Depends on the person. I usually go with more of the lime, sea salt, and a pinch of, or, or a, like a fourth half teaspoon 
of uh, raw honey. It could be raw local wildflower or it could be Manuka Factor 6. I've talked about the Factor 16, sorry. I've talked about that before as well. All of these are great for adding your own natural minerals, which does what? Well, it naturally alkalizes the body from a perspective of it's giving your body the minerals that it needs to alkalize and rebalance itself. So again, your body's has to maintain a certain pH, and it always does that in terms of the blood, but it does that by maintaining certain mineral levels of the body. All right? So hopefully that helps. Okay, next question. Is this a third one by Joanna? It is. All right, Joanna is asking, well, we have four questions by Joanna. All right, let me see if I can get through these. Joanna, so it's not the Joanna podcast. I'm just kidding. It's totally fine to ask these. All right, Dr. Brawl, thank you for taking the time to answer these questions. I've been diagnosed with high... I think you meant to wrote pyroles, but it's pyroles here. Disorder about a year ago, which means I don't absorb zinc or B6 well. I take B6 and zinc, about 50 milligrams of zinc before bed. Also, what's in the DNS? My question is, I'm on week 10 of the CBO protocol, working on my absorption. I have white spots in the nails that won't disappear. How do I absorb this better? I take zinc picolinate. Okay. So I have been through this myself many times. I work with a lot of people. Nothing to worry about. Here's what you need to do. This is, well, again, I can't prescribe over podcast, right? But here's what I would do if I was in your position. I would take the daily nutritional support, one to two capsules of the activated B complex. I'm sorry, you're already doing it, the DNS, one at lunch and potentially one at dinner. I would take the zinc picolinate at night with dinner. And we have a great brand right at equilibriumnutrition.com. And the last thing is you need to make sure you have magnesium. So you want to make sure that you're getting your B vitamins, not just B6, but that truly matters. Your zinc, but also your magnesium. Magnesium is part of this. So you take magnesium at least with dinner. And I would take two capsules just to start of the full spectrum magnesium at dinner. That will help with the absorption of those other nutrients as well. That will help tremendously. Okay. Don't forget your omega-3 support too. It helps tremendously with that. Okay. So I think Joanna, it's the Joanna podcast today because I'm I'm seeing it. Two more questions. So I'm going to give you the short version of it. She's an undermethylator taking N-acetylcysteine, NAC, and SAMe for serotonin. My question is, is the SAMe necessary? I've started the adrenal soothe. I get bad hay fever and sinus, so it's difficult to take the ashwagandha. Can I heal from undermethylation? Okay, here's the thing. I've never seen anybody really need the SAMe. I honestly haven't. I used to use SAMe back in the past. I didn't feel a difference whether I was on it or not, I'm really, truly. So what I give you before is what really matters. The game changers are this. Vitamin C, zinc, magnesium, and your B-complex. Game changers for undermethylators and for those with pyroli issues and histamines, etc. Go higher on the magnesium and the vitamin C for the histamine issues. It works tremendously. And again, you're going to be rebuilding your gut. So these things about ashwagandha and the hay fever, I totally get it. Believe me, I understand that. Couldn't do it in the past myself. You'll be able to overcome that most likely. So um, you're on the right path. Don't overdo. 500 milligrams of N-acetylcysteine, sure, fine. As long as that doesn't give you brain fog, you're good to go. I like it. It's fantastic. You're good. Okay. Next question from Joanna. I just want to know how you healed your histamine intolerance. Okay. So I healed my histamine intolerance by completely revamping my gut. Because your body will then be able to rebalance an immune system to, to calm Th2 dominance, which is a huge part of histamine issues and mastocytosis, which means the mast cells producing more cytokines and producing more histamines, okay? So, and, and I had issues with what's called leukotrienes, but I don't want to get too deep into this so that everybody doesn't fall asleep. All right, so here's the deal, though. I got rid of my candida, I got rid of my H. pylori, and I got rid of my SIBO. I didn't have parasites. I was working on them, so maybe I had them, but I, I didn't never tested positive pers- parasites ever. Never had it. H. pylori... Candida, SIBO, yes, I had all of those in massive abundance, okay? So believe me, I know what a issue that is, but that's also how I came up with the CBO protocol. A lot of people are trying to copy it now, but I'm telling you, this is it. Like I spent a long time putting this together and it works. Bottom line is I know it works. How do I know it works? I don't just say that, I re-lab test people and I know that it works. So, okay, that's what I did. I healed my gut with the CBO protocol. I sealed up my gut with the healthy gut support, those products, and I just put them together in one to make it more cost-effective for you. And then I use my probiotics. But for me, again, I was prone to getting brain fog with probiotics. So I still needed them. So I took them before bed. That's what I did. Now I can take them one in the morning, one at night, and I'm fine. But before, I had to use them before bed. Okay, well, then that's what I had to do. No, no problem. Then 
I still rebalanced total inflammation. I didn't overdo exercise. I didn't overdo sauna when I was trying to get well. Again, I overdid everything because that's my personality, only to learn that you can't overdo it, right? That's the whole rain barrel. And I wrote a whole book on this because I need people to know all of us have different rain barrels. I'm a more sensitive type. (laughs) Maybe I don't seem like it, but I certainly am. And that means that I can overdo things easily, right? So what I do is I just make sure I'm more balanced. That's it. I mean, that's how I healed it. I sealed up my gut, healed my gut. I gave myself then omega-3s. And again, I had to work up omega-3s because they gave me brain fog. So what did I do? I took my omega-3s with dinner and I started with a liquid omega-3 so I could dose it. And I did a fourth a teaspoon. Then I did a half a teaspoon for a couple of weeks. Then I did a full teaspoon. And that's where I, that's what I do. And it works great. So all of these things help tremendously. We know EPA from fish oil works and we know the zinc and the, uh, and the vitamin C. I'm a, such a huge advocate of vitamin C for histamine issues. Couldn't be a bigger proponent of vitamin C. Uh, and now I can even use food-based vitamin C, with the, which is our full-spectrum vitamin C. And I never used to be able to do that. I had to use straight ascorbic acid. And that's why when people say like, oh, you should only use food-based vitamin C. Well, I mean, talk to somebody who can't deal with histamine issues. And vitamin C comes from citrus-based foods for the most part. So talk about histamine issues, right? So that's why never listen to somebody that says you can only do it one way and it has to be one way and never only use food-based. They just, they don't work in a clinical practice. And I don't mean to be demeaning when I say that, but my job is to help everyone in the entire world to the best of my ability. So I will pull no punches and I will just tell you the way that it really is. Like, listen, sure, I want to live in an ideal world too, but I live in the real world, right? So not just the ideal, I live in the real world and I have to help people and sometimes we use ascorbic acid. It's okay. You know, <laughs> it's okay. All right. Joanna, that was 16 minutes of the Joanna podcast. I hope that was helpful. I'm, of course, I'm joking around. I'm always happy to help. Thank you, Joanna, for writing in. And I think we'll help a lot of people with your questions. So never feel bad about writing in with your questions. I'm here to help. All right. Magda's up next. I'm going to start the seven-day detox program this Friday, May 10th. I see that a cup of herbal tea is optional. Is it optional to have a cup of coffee in the morning upon waking? or not recommended during the detox. All right. Well, so this is one of those questions where it does say it's going to take about 10 weeks to answer your question. So I apologize. Perfect question to ask at cabralsupportgroup.com. But also just head on over to, well, you can do stephencabral.com forward slash FAQ, or you can go to equilibriumnutrition.com forward slash FAQ, and you'll find everything there. You can go to drcabraldetox.com forward slash FAQ. All of these are answered on the FAQ page. You are welcome to continue your morning cup of coffee on the detox if you don't want to give it up, which I totally understand. You know, maybe that's something that you give up in the future, or maybe you always keep it in. And if you don't have adrenal-based issues and you enjoy your morning cup of coffee, as long as you're not having a pot of coffee, I'm okay with that. I really am because there are benefits to drinking coffee as well. But if it spikes cortisol and it really is taxing on your immune system, your nervous system, your endocrine system, well, then of course I can't recommend it, right? So that's what I do. But again, you can test that on a thyroid adrenal hormone if it's affecting you too much. Even a hair tissue mineral analysis would show you that as well. All right, Kate's up next. Hello, Dr. Brawl. My nine-year-old son has been unwell for years on and off. An immunologist is pretty sure that he has PFAPA, an auto-inflammatory disease. Do you have any treatments for this? Thanks. Okay, this is a great question. And please, please, please... Do not allow your doctor to put a label on what you have and call it a disease. Honestly, this is a detriment to Kate, to myself back in the day, to anyone that wants to heal. Let me tell you what PFAPA in auto inflammatory disease, and I do that in air quotes, is periodic fever, stomatitis pharyngitis, adenitis. Let me explain exactly what that is. It's a fever, sometimes, mouth sores, sometimes, sore throat, sometimes, lymph nodes, sometimes. Okay, so you're telling me that sometimes I get a fever, sometimes I get a little bit of inflammation in my stomach or mouth or throat or lymph nodes, my glands, and this is a disease, right? Well, Here's the thing. The doctor gives you that. The next question has to be, why does my son have this? And Kate, this is not your fault. This is labeling people so that we can make them feel better 
that we figured out what they have. All your doctor has done, and it's not their fault because this is what they're taught in medical school. All they've done is tell you your symptoms and called it P-F-A-P-A. Oh, you, have, you sometimes get a fever. Your son sometimes gets a fever. And sometimes it gets inflammation of the mouth and esophagus and the throat. And that's caused by inflammation. Okay, this is the problem with conventional medicine. What do we do? Do we put them on a immunosuppressant? Well, immunosuppressant, that young, what are we doing? And then what do we do? Just put them on anti-inflammatories? Okay. But inflammation will always find a path because it's being caused by something. This is the problem. Again, this is the problem. I went through it myself. Two years being like, oh, I have Addison's disease. I have myalgic encephalomyelitis. They didn't even have that back then. I have fibromyalgia. I have rheumatoid arthritis. I have type 2 diabetes. I have POTS, right? Well, what do we do? Oh, well, we'll just give you a cocktail of pharmaceuticals. I was given Prilosec for my heartburn and acid reflux. Nobody told me I had H. pylori. I was given um, Cortef for my Addison's disease. I was given Florinef for my POTS. I was told to manage the symptoms for essentially everything else. Advil, NyQuil. What was I on? A cocktail of Sudafed in the morning to wake me up with my allergies. And to put me to bed, I was on Benadryl, Ambien. And then when that was maybe too groggy, I was on Lunesta. All I was given was a cocktail of medication. I was getting sicker. The medications were making me feel just as bad. I was a walking zombie. So what do you do? Well, you have to ask why. And unfortunately, again, I'm all for conventional medicine in life-saving acute instances. Absolutely. And many of my colleagues are MDs. And so I don't put down MDs. But this is a chronic issue. MDs are not equipped through medical school to deal with chronic issues. They're using medication to manage the symptoms because they don't want you to suffer. It's noble. It is. I understand it. I get it. I'm not coming down on them. But you need to ask why. And the only way you're going to figure this out, honestly, is to run something like the Big Five. And if you can't afford the Big Five labs, I understand. I couldn't either. We ran one or two labs at a time, and we did them every couple months. That's why mom and I did. That's what it was. Okay? So first things first, I ran a food sensitivity test, and I ran an adrenal hormone test. Okay? That was a great decision. It really was. But, you know, in your case now, we could give you a great elimination diet. We could already give you great omega-3s. So if you're trying to save, like really spend your money wisely, my highest recommendation, organic acids test, then stool test, then hair tissue mineral analysis for a nine-year-old in your condition. If you want me to give the exact order, organic acids, stool test, hair tissue mineral analysis, then the food sensitivity test, then the omega-3. That's what I would do. So in that order... Do what you feel is best for you. Again, I, I'm not here to try to treat, cure, diagnose, but I'm telling you right now, I'm on the same page. I want to help your son. If I get those labs in front of me, there's no doubt in my mind we're going to find something. There's no doubt in my mind because there's something off in the body. So we need to look deeper. We need to look at heavy metals. We need to look at gut function. We need to look at bacterial issues. I mean, there's something going on. I mean, there, there's probably, honestly, there's probably a multitude. Food sensitivities and some type of maybe used antibiotics in the past. And, you know, he has some type of intestinal permeability as SIBO maybe. I mean, I don't know, right? I'm guessing that the only way not to ever guess, and I'm never going to lie to you about this. The only way to never guess is to test. That's it. Now we can make educated guesses. Okay. We can make educated guesses. Someone has bloating or gas or, you know, real indigestion issues. Let's do the CBO protocol. Like I, that's okay. I'm okay with that. I, I'm definitely okay with that. We'll add the citrocytal as well. Cause we never know what we're going to have fine in there. But for something like this, where it's you know now an auto-inflammatory, autoimmune dis-ease, let's figure out what it is. So that's how I work in my practice. Again, it doesn't have to be the only way, but I can tell you it does work. It does work. So you can see a local practitioner that works in this fashion, or you can always work through equilibriumnutrition.com, and uh, my team and I are here to help. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning into today's show. I'm going to be back tomorrow picking up with... Catherine will be our first, then Judy, then Katie, and a few more that have come in. That one will be in the beginning of 
May. All right. Thanks, everyone. I hope you're having an amazing weekend. As always, if this show is helpful, please do feel free to pass along to anyone else you believe it could serve. Before you go, I wanted to ask you this question. What if I could teach you in just a couple of hours how to transform your thyroid, hormones, adrenal, cholesterol, blood pressure, blood sugar, weight loss, energy, mood, brain, pregnancy, anti-aging, or many other health-related issues? After 20 years in private practice, after seeing and overseeing a quarter of a million client appointments, I sincerely feel I have the real-world data and have found the answer you've been searching for. So what I've done is spent hundreds of hours of my own time refining what you need to know in order to uncover your underlying root cause health issues and then begin to rebalance the body and bring it back to a state of robust health and wellness. I'm going to teach you exactly what I do in my private practice so you can understand how you got here and now what you need to do in order to heal. You'll receive all of the important success checklists, protocols, and even ways to customize it to make the program fit your busy life. And you'll get all of this at a fraction of the price. Let me save you the time, money, energy, stress, and frustration of not knowing what to do next. Instead of reading dozens of books on the topic and seeing multiple practitioners, I will condense everything that you need to know in just a few hours of video tutorials that you can watch and listen to anywhere. Together, we will make this healing process an enjoyable one that you can take with you for the rest of your life. I wish you all of the best of health and happiness, and I hope to be able to guide you on your healing journey through my health results accelerators. Simply choose the health imbalance you're currently suffering from, and by the end of today, you'll know what went wrong and how to get well again. I guarantee it. For details, head over now to stephencabral.com forward slash courses.